What is up here? This is Minute Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, I actually don't remember everything that happened in the last episode. It's been a few days since I last played, so forgive me while my memory's a little bit foggy. I'm sure things will come back as we hop back into it. So, Sigma is asking Temyoji and Clover, is this another warehouse? That's right, we had just we completed a puzzle, didn't we? Which room was it, though, is the question. Was it the infirmary? Maybe. I don't think so, though. It was the PEC room. Yes, there was the, the Zero the Third plush, not plush, inflatable. That was really funny. Looks just like the one on the last floor. There's even a big old door in the same spot where the number nine door is in the other warehouse. True, but it's rusted over. I don't think it's opening anytime soon. Just gotta, you know, get a little WD-40 on that. No lever to open it anyway, that I can see. Well, shoot. We couldn't possibly open that with our bare hands. Duh. How much do you think that thing weighs? Not enough for Sigma and his... I don't know, super bulk to be able to open. You'd have about as much luck trying to lift a pickup truck, even if it was unlocked. Hmm. I want to know what those are. Those white doors? Are they chromatic doors? Hmm. Yeah, it seems like it. I mean, look at this. It's one of those things that says lock. Yeah, just like the ones next to the other chromatic doors. So you're saying all the chromatic doors for the next round are white? Yeah, they were different colors before, but... Guess things have changed for this round. Before we could discuss the doors any further, a familiar robotic voice crackled over the speakers. Ah, that's right, it's our good friend Dio, I'm sure. An Ambidex gate has been opened. Forty-five minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. What? One of the other teams opened the gate early. What the heck did they do that for? We haven't even started back yet. Ah, never mind why. We just need to get back, get back up there, pronto. I don't know why my, my, my wrist just all of a sudden spasmed a little bit. I've been playing this game called Mai Mai. Uh, it's a really fun rhythm game that I recently found in my area, which is shocking because I, I really only played it in Japan before. But since playing it a bunch earlier, uh, my, my muscles have been super tight. I'm worried about Quark. We need to hook up with Alice and Kate. The sooner the better. Right, got it. Let's go. Alrighty, off we go. Who's gonna get upset, and how's gonna how upset are they going to be with Dio this time around? Forgive me if I'm a little bit low energy, a little bit tired at the moment. The past couple weeks been kind of shifting back and forth between day shifts and night shifts, and so it's got my circadian rhythm a little bit screwed up. We return to the Floor A warehouse to find only two people waiting for us. Kay, who'd gone through the red door. And Dio, who'd gone through the green door. 
Where's Quark? We took him to the infirmary. At the moment, Alice, Fi, and Luna are looking after him. Is he alright? I don't know if I would describe him as alright, but apparently his condition is not worsened, if that's what you mean. He is still resting. However, we... Good. I'm going to the infirmary. Ah. Temyoji, please, wait! Temyoji ignored K and took off at a run through the yellow door. Interesting. So in the other timelines, we were in the infirmary for that discussion of who's going to go, who's going to stay, what are the implications on who's going to automatically ally in the AB game. But now we're on the other end. All that's been talked about, all that's been decided without us. And now it's just us and K. Yare, yare. <laughs> and Dio, of course. Oh dear. He's gone. There was something I needed to tell him. Well, it's not like it matters. The girls will just tell him when he gets there. He ought to calm down once he sees the kid. Clover and I looked at one another, eyebrows raised. Um... What are they going to tell him? <laughs> yeah, Clover and Sigmar here are like, uh, we're out of the loop too, guys. Well, you see. What? You found virus medicine in the laboratory? Yes. Unfortunately, we found only a single vial. Then we can cure Quark's Radical Six. So it would seem. Well, I guess we should head over to the infirmary and see how he's doing. Come on, let's go. Right behind you. And if I recall correctly, there was another timeline where, of course, we found the medicine on Quark himself. I'm trying to remember why we didn't just use it on him then. I think it's because Alice went berserk around that time too, and we had the the dilemma of who do we use the vial for because we can only use it for one person. And then I think the lock was, Sigma was like, oh, wait, I know that there's a second vial somewhere and we haven't found where that second vial is yet. Right? I think. <laughs> I hope I'm remembering it correctly. <laughs> he should be fine now. It might take some time for him to recover fully, but the worst is over. Interesting, so we're actually going to see the results of the antiviral medicine. Luna's voice was quiet as she stepped back from Quark. She held an injection gun with an empty vial. Delicately, she placed it back in the cabinet. Quark had been laid out on a crude cot, and was still sound asleep. His breathing was even, and his expression was peaceful. He looked like any other child, sleeping soundly after a long day of doing whatever it is children do to amuse themselves. Any trace of the insanity he'd shown earlier was nowhere to be found. Is... is he really going to be okay? Yes. We analyzed the vial and confirmed that it was definitely Accelivir. Now that I've administered it... The Axelavir should eradicate the virus completely, given enough time, right? Yes, that should be the case. Thank goodness. Now the question is, is Alice gonna go berserk in this timeline, right? And if so, or if not, what's the difference between this timeline and the other timelines that prevents her from going berserk in this one? Is it that she's not infected, or is it that she's infected and there's just not enough time? I'm not sure. Yeah, what a relief. Things were looking pretty sketchy there for a while, that's for sure. I felt some of the tension disappear from my shoulders, and I let out a breath I hadn't realized I'd been holding. We weren't out of the woods yet, but at least Quark was safe. Temyoji let out a long, shaky sigh. 
and lowered himself onto one of the empty beds. He rubbed his hands wearily across his face, and I thought I saw the glint of tears. Alice, you and Kay, I... I don't know what to say other than thanks. This is really nice. This is very heartwarming, right? This is a timeline where Temyoji is able to trust everyone. Um, well, not everyone, right? He talked about how there could be a killer among them, etc. But people are giving him reasons to trust them. People are... He's finding reasons to enjoy being around the people that he's around. People are taking care of not just himself, but the people that he loves, right? Granted, we don't really know why with Quark or whatnot, but I'm sure we'll figure it out eventually. You saved his life. I don't know the words to tell you how that, how much that means to me. Oh, please. It was nothing, really. We just happened to be the ones who went through the red door. Where is Kay? He's not in here. He's still in the warehouse. Dio and Kay stayed behind. They went there to wait for you guys while we came back here. We figured someone should explain what was going on so you wouldn't come back to an empty warehouse. That's actually a really good idea. Some sort of communication rather than have people just kind of waiting in the warehouse for a long time, building a lot of anxiety, what's going on with the rest of the team, etc. So Dio and Kay were the ones who opened the AB gates? Not both of them. There was only one door open. Hmm. Well, we should get back and tell them how Quark's doing. Kay will want to know, at least. Yeah, you're right. Everybody's like, nobody cares about Dio, right? I mean, for what it's worth, Dio doesn't care about anybody else. I nodded and headed back toward the other side of the room. I was nearly there when Temyoji suddenly spoke. That's right! Huh? You know that memory card we found? This thing? Yeah. I think I know how we can take a look at what's on it. What, you don't remember? There was a memory card just like it that we used to solve the puzzles in here. Yeah, he's right. There's a slot next to the screen. It should work for this one, too. Oh, yeah. There it is. Right. Yeah. Well, let's give it a shot. Yeah, I want to see what's on it. I'm really curious. The question is not really so much what's on it, but who is this going to be tied to? This memory card is clearly going to have some important information, and I think it's going to be very personal to one of the players of the Nonary game. Okay, just give me a minute here. Let's see. I slid the card in the slot next to the screen. No sooner had I done so than an image of a waveform popped up on the screen. Is there an audio file on here? Sounds like it. Why don't we turn up the volume a bit? Luna tapped a few things on the screen, and a bar began to move across the screen. Before long, a voice drifted out of the speakers. Oh boy, here we go. This is Control. How's it going over there? Bet you missed the sound of my voice, huh? Well, I gotta be honest, it's getting pretty lonely over here, too. Feeling kinda like howling at the moon, lone wolf style. Speaking of which, I'm looking at it right now, and the old girl is beautiful. Never seen a moon this full, and that color. Tonight's that eclipse, remember? What a way to end 2028, huh? 
The moon's this amazing red. If it wasn't so beautiful, I'd be kind of ominous. Wish you guys could see it too, but... Ah, sorry, forgot. You're supposed to be on Mars, aren't you? What? So, uh, how are Phobos and Deimos looking right now? Sure hope I'll get to look up at them someday, too. Anyway, over. Hey. Something wrong? Talk to me, guys. What, you gonna play hard to get because we haven't talked in so long? Enough jokes, alright? Knock it off. Where are you guys? Is there something wrong with the radio? You're saying everything's green. Well then what the heck's going on here? Why aren't they responding? No, the video feed's online. Look, you can see all nine of them, three at each table. All nine of them? Huh. Three at each table? What tables? What? Someone hacked our feed? What do you mean this isn't live? An old clip on repeat? Who would do that? What in the heck is happening here? This is control, I repeat. This is control. Please come in. I'm asking you to respond. This is... Oh, thank God. You really had me worried there. What happened? Six of us are... dead. What? Counting myself, there are only three left. This woman kind of sounds like Luna. How? Why are... They were killed. What? I... I guess you could say I killed them. I... This sounds so much like Luna, guys. No. No, that's not quite right. Not just them, not just these six. All of them. All six billion. Soon I will have killed six billion people. Are you there? Respond! Darn it. This is control, I repeat. This is control. We have an emergency situation. We have an unconfirmed report of six deceased test subjects. Deploy rescue and escort teams to the test site immediately. Crap. What the heck happened in there? Wow. Wow. So what do we make of that clip? First of all, who's the woman, right? I would say it's either Luna or the old woman. We don't really know which of which, but it sounded a lot like Luna to me. And the other thing is the the talk of, you know, killing six people and then six billion people. I think that's more in like a passive way. Like whoever's talking is saying, I couldn't save them. I couldn't do what I needed to to keep those people alive. So in a sense, I killed them. Is the impression I got from that description of, you know, saying that that they're responsible for that, for those deaths. 
And then the whole idea of control and them supposedly being on Mars, right? Somebody, whoever the control operator is, is able to see the blood moon at the end of 2028, which we confirm is what we saw when we get outside the facility, right? But we're supposedly on Mars or whoever the control operator is talking to is saying that the, the woman, as well as the eight other test subjects she's, you know, grouped with, are supposedly on Mars. Would we even be able to see a blood moon from there? I don't think so, right? So are we on Mars or are we not on Mars? Are we on Mars in this timeline and not in the other timeline? I don't, I don't really know. The other thing is nine test subjects, right? What are they testing via this? Is it some sort of social experiment? Is it a sort of like morphogenetic field theory type um, experiment? Or is it or is it a test related to radical six, right? I don't I don't know. And I mean we're obviously not supposed to know yet, but just some speculation as to what it could be referring to. It's so puzzling. And then there's the question of this woman seems to be one of the test, one of the nine test subjects, right? And so who are they and what is the relation to the control operator? The control operator seems to be monitoring what's going on, but why? Hmm. And is this one woman supposed to be monitoring from within the, you know, the experiment? And then the other is thing, the other thing is the notion of the hacked feed, right? Somebody was able to hack the feed and play a clip of the nine of them sitting at three tables. And if that's the case, I would think that the person who hacked that feed is the zero senior who basically took control of what was initially a test sort of experiment type setup and instead turned it into what the nonary game is right now. Is that's my initial impression, but I guess that's enough speculation for now. Sigma says, "Is is that it?" <laughs> yes. <laughs> what on earth was that? Any ideas? I got only frowns and shaken heads in response. Only one person showed a reaction other than stunned confusion. Ten Yoji. Long after the audio ended, he stared at the screen deep in thought. Ten Yoji san. Do you know something, Tenmyoji? Uh, yeah, I think I know what that was. It's probably a transmission from the Mars mission test site. Mars? I'm sorry, what? You mean some kind of space travel? What kind of test site was it? Hmm. Did you know that the government is developing spaceships with particle annihilation engines? These ships would be able to get humans to Mars a lot faster than old chemical rockets. But they don't want to just send a manned Mars mission off half-cock. That was the idea behind this test. They built a whole complex on this old Air Force base in Nevada. The idea was the idea was that it would be a simulation of a manned mission to Mars with a crew of nine men and women. They'd monitor the whole thing and use that data to plan the real mission. So what we just listened to was a transmission from that project? Yeah. Why is something like that here? Don't know why. The other thing that's so weird is in order for that to be like real and for us to be the test subject referred to in that 
experiment, it has to be from the future, I guess, right? It couldn't have already occurred if we are the nine test subjects and, well, nine of us are alive, right? So maybe this is to potentially imply that we're the real thing? You know, we're the real subjects, not just the test subjects? We found it in the safe. No explanation. Dollars to donuts, it's got something to do with Zero's plan. You mean we were meant to hear what was on that card? Yeah. That's all very interesting, but how exactly do you know about all this? About the simulated Mars mission? Yes. I was involved with the project. Involved? The intent was to create as accurate a simulation as possible. That meant we'd need to simulate the radio silence we'd experience during conjunction. Conjunction? What's a conjunction? It means two things in space are close to each other. In this case, we're talking about a superior conjunction, where Mars and Earth are on the exact opposite sides of the Sun. So, unless we've got some sort of relay, there will be a period of time where we won't be able to communicate with each other. What we heard on that card was when the simulated conjunction was scheduled to end. That's when they died. No, we don't know that. They could have died long before that conversation. Uh, the people that referenced in that uh, in the audio. All we know is that's when it was discovered. Ah, uh, yes, an, uh, you know, alluding to the whole Schrodinger's bot or Schrodinger's cat sort of thing, where it's like we don't know what state it is. We only know that once it's been, you know, observed, quantified. So six of the test subjects died, right? Uh, yeah. Well, do you remember what she said? There was something about how she didn't just kill six people. She said six billion. It makes it sound like whatever they were depending on was for the sake of all of humanity. What the heck did she mean by that? Just what the heck happened there? Temyoji frowned and looked down at the floor. We were all silent as he paced slowly back and forth across the room. At last he stopped, raised his head, and spoke. The truth is that there's a chance a virus escaped from the test site. Oh, a virus by the name of Radical Six? A virus? Wait, you don't mean... Yeah, Radical Six. What? How, how can that be? Just telling you what I know, okay? Nobody's sure how Radical Six got in there in the first place, but... One of the subjects might have been infected when they entered, or the virus itself might have been an intentional part of the simulation. The test site deaths became the index case for a pandemic. Well, 
Anyway, Prevailing Wisdom says it got out somehow, and once it was out, it spread pretty quick. All across the planet. And it killed six billion people? Well, not directly. Best numbers put only a third or so of those deaths at directly caused by Radical Six. The other four billion died from the collapse caused by the depths, deaths of that first third. The whole world just fell apart. So this is interesting, because now we know for a fact that Temyoji witnessed the pandemic, right? Temyoji saw the world collapse at the hands of Radical Six, and is now here and doesn't know why, right? That also puts him on a very different timeline from the other characters. Wow, um... Darn, I, I have a lot of questions. I don't even know where to start. I don't even know where to start knowing where to start. Well, no, take that back. Explain that date. Unless I heard this wrong, the day the Radical Six got out was December 31st, 2028. Wait, really? The day the Radical Six got out was December 31st, 2028. Huh. Yeah. But if we're... What? Radical Six got out on December 31st, 2028. But that's the day of the blood moon and all that jazz. And that's what we see when we escape the facility. There's no way it all happened in one day either, right? So we have to be living past the collapse of society as a result of Radical Six spreading everywhere, which I don't think happened over the course of 24 hours, if that. But the day I got grabbed by the guy in the gas mask was December 25th, 2028. Me too. Christmas Day. I was kidnapped on Christmas too. Clover and I were taken three days earlier, on the 22nd. Yeah. Then you see what I'm saying, right? That recording was made close to a week after we were all picked up. What the heck is going on here? That thing is from the future! You see... Ten minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. Ah, yes, of course. Gotta rely on the Ambidex game to cut all of the explanations short. All players, please enter your votes. No votes recorded, automatically allied. We're out of time. We need to go back to the warehouse. But please do explain later on, Temyoji. Wait! You haven't answered... Don't care. I need more than 10 minutes to explain everything. Doing a poor job is just going to make you more confused. Now get moving. But... That's enough! Shut your hole or I'm picking Betray! Hey, come on now! Fine, do what you want, but I need to get back to the AB rooms. I'd like to stay with Bork, but he seems to be doing alright. I'll stay here with him. If I can do the voting for our pair, I can trust her. Is that alright with you? Yeah, sure. Well, if you'd be willing to do that, I'd be much obliged. This is interesting. Luna is willing to trust Fi to do the voting. That's so odd, because Luna, rather than simply to entrust that vote to other people, I think would be very compelled to choose Ally. 
and wouldn't trust somebody else with a vote unless she trusted them to choose ally. I don't think Phi is one of the characters that really gives off ally vibes, right? Thanks, Luna. Take good care of him. Of course, I'll make sure everything goes fine. Tamoji gave her one last nod, then turned and dashed out of the infirmary. Well, that's that, I guess. We should probably be going, too. Yes. We'll just have to wait to hear the rest of what he has to say later. I'd rather just get it all out in the open now, but there's not much we can do. Let's get going, then. We return to the warehouse to find only Kay. I explained what had happened with Quark, then glanced around the room. Hey, where's Dio? He has gone into his AV room. Already? Indeed. Then he opened the first AV gate, right? Of course. This is bad. I won't be able to talk with him. This is going to limit my choices. You've only got one BP left, don't you? Yeah, Luna's the same. Oof, that is a really tough spot. Not being able to communicate with Dio before you're in an AB game room with him? With one point? If Fi chooses ally and Dio picks betray... Fi and Luna will be penalized. I don't have a choice. I'll have to pick Betray. The risk with Ally is just too high. Hey Alice, don't you have one BP too? That's right. But K and I will be playing against Quark. And he'll just default to Ally. I guess you don't need to worry about getting penalized then, huh? But what if Alice and Kay choose Betray? You needn't worry. That will not happen. Even though, as you have told me, Quark is recovering, he is still weak. Moreover, he is only a child. To betray an innocent child would be... Yeah, that would be unthinkable. Even if you ignored his age or condition, it's hardly fair to take advantage of someone who can't vote. So you'll vote to ally? Yes. Of course. Hmm... I actually think they will. Well then, shall we go? Yes. Kay and Alice nodded to one another and disappeared into the AB room sec second from the right. Without saying anything, Phi turned and walked into the room just left of theirs. That left only myself, Clover, and Temyoji. Do you remember what you said to me when you chose the blue door? Something about how you'd convince me to choose ally. Seems like now would be the time to let me know how you're going to convince me. Well, it's not that complicated. I promise you that Clover and I will vote ally. That's it, pretty much. Hmm, I see. And you figure I'll believe you because you've only got one BP. Yeah, 
Once you've told me that you plan to ally, I won't be able to choose the trait. Since if you're telling the truth, you'll kill me. Not a bad plan, but it assumes that I've taken killing you off the table. Seems like a risky bet for you. I disagree. And why is that? Clover's BP is 6. If you ally and we betray, then she'd have enough points to escape, right? She could run off through the number 9 door as soon as this round is over. I never... That's easy for you to say. But I think about it from my... But think about it from my perspective. Sure, you might not, but you also might. If I guess wrong, that's a pretty big loss for me. <laughs> well, what if Clover tries to seduce you to get what she wants? What? Huh? That's just an example. What I'm trying to say is that once you two are in that room, Clover might try and make some sort of bargain with you. I'm asking what you're going to do if that happens. Are you sure you'll still choose ally? Seduce me, huh? <laughs> Sigma's like thinking through it in his head. Hey! What are you staring at, you perv? There's no way on earth I'd do anything like that. Ugh, oh, as if. In your dreams, creep. Well, that's that then. Not gonna lie though, I'm a little disappointed. Hmm. So I can trust you? You're gonna choose ally? Yeah. You can trust us. Promise? Of course. We promise. Alright. I guess I'll vote ally too then. Yeah, Sigma does make a really great argument that he doesn't want Clover to get to 9 regardless. Three minutes remain until Amidex game polling closes. Well, looks like we don't have much time left. I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you too. Temyoji gave us a curt nod, then turned and strode into the second AB room from the left. Right, well, let's get to it. Yeah. Yeah, I think we stick with Ally here. Uh, we obviously, well, we might not actually, but I think we'll have the option to choose between Ally and Betray. And I'm very much leaning towards Ally still. Uh, even though Clover seems somewhat trustworthy, I wouldn't want her to get to 9 points. Even though it could lead to our deaths. I, I don't think Temyoji's gonna do it. I don't think so. This is the Temyoji Redemption Arc. Hey, Sigma, I wanted to ask you something. Oh no, oh no, the way she's saying that. What's up? Could you pick Betray for me? What? I mean, I could try and, like, tackle you. But you're so big and strong, you'd probably just throw me on the ground and that'd be it. Yeah, well, um... So I thought I might as well just ask you really nicely. Oh, I mean, I'd be happy to, um, pay you back. If you just pick Betray for me, then I'll listen to anything you say. Uh, anything? Sigma, no! No, Sigma! Yep. Anything. So think carefully, okay? 
If you choose ally, you're trusting him with your life. Yeah, if he chooses betray, it's all over. Uh-huh. Are you really, really sure you can trust that old fart? Hey now, that's not very nice. The only safe choice is to pick betray. But if he chooses ally and we don't... Then I'll have 9 BP. But you don't need to worry about that. Even if I do get 9 BP, I won't just go and open the number 9 door all by myself. I mean, Alice wouldn't have 9 points yet. And I can't leave her behind. Please, Sigma. Will you pick Betray? Wow, Clover Clover making big moves here. 20 seconds remain until Ambidex game polling closes. The voting machine was in front of me. I didn't have much time left to think. Would I keep my promise to Temyoji and pick Ally? Or would I betray him for Clover and... And... If you just pick Betray for me, then I'll listen to anything you say. It's like, if we pick Betray here, it's like the horn dog ending. <laughs> In the end, there was only one possible answer. We ally over here. We ally over here. We're not gonna listen to you, Clover. Screw that. Temyoji's a bro. <laughs> this is the Temyoji redemption arc here. Round two of the Ambidex game has been completed. Results will be displayed in the warehouse. Thank you for your participation. Ambidex gates now opening. I want to see Clover's reaction. <laughs> She's gonna be pissed. Oh wow! So we're like we. <laughs> Can you believe that, guys? We don't even get like an immediate Clover reaction. We don't get to see anybody else coming out. We don't have like a little conversation, a little powwow before going to see the results. It's literally just boom right to the results screen. And of course, those of you who have been watching now for well over forty episodes know exactly what's gonna happen here. I'm gonna say that we're gonna find out. In the next episode, just what happens with Temyoji, with Clover, and the result of this AV game. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I actually really liked this one in particular. I think the sound clip was particularly intriguing, and hearing more about Temyoji's background was really satisfying, and I'm eager to hear more about it, and I hope you guys are too. But until the next episode, this is Movement Night Zero, and this mission is complete.